All right. Thank you all for coming today. Today's press conference is focused on something I mentioned in Burlington at the Vermont Climate Pledge Coalition a few weeks ago. Today, by executive order, I am forming the Vermont Climate Action Commission. This commission will be advising me on specific policy recommendations to put Vermont on a path to meeting our ambitious renewable and climate change goals. Despite what's going on in Washington, I'm committed to doing our part. In response to the federal government's withdrawal from the Paris Agreement, I've joined 13 other governors to affirm the state's commitment to meeting our share of the emissions reductions for the United States Climate Alliance. In one respect, it was an easy decision because in Vermont, we are already committed to going further and I believe we can and will reach our goals of 90% renewables and greenhouse gas emissions reductions of 80 to 95% by 2050. Climate change has proven to be a disruptive force on Vermonters and our economy. The question we have to answer today is whether we're going to let the impacts of a changing climate threaten our people and our economy, or are we going to harness the innovative minds of Vermonters to lead the growing climate change economy? Here in Vermont, we've already seen positive growth in renewable energy jobs. This sector alone supports approximately 19,000 jobs which is a 29% increase from just over three years ago. This is something we can all build upon, but all sectors of Vermont's economies will need to change to take advantage of this economic opportunity. At the same time, while developing solutions that grow the economy and lower our emissions, we cannot leave any part of our state or its residents behind. We have diverse challenges to overcome to meet this monumental task and ensure that Vermont becomes more affordable. I have formed this commission because I want to make sure the rubber does indeed meet the road. So I've asked them to develop recommendations that meet fundamental criteria so that Vermont can thrive while we mitigate the worst impacts of climate change. The criteria I've laid out are the following. Solutions that reduce greenhouse gas emissions must spur economic activity, inspire and grow Vermont businesses, and put Vermonters on a path to affordability. The development of solutions must engage all Vermonters so no individual or group of Vermonters is unduly burdened and programs developed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions must collectively provide solutions for all Vermonters to reduce their carbon impact and save money. I've asked Peter Walk, the Deputy uh, Secretary of the Agency of Natural Resources to chair the commission and Paul Costello of the Vermont Council on Rural Development to be co-chair. I'm glad to be joined by both of them today. We are also joined by several other members of the commission. Uh, some are here, some are not. Uh, but Mike Sherling, the Secretary of the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. June Tierney, who is here, Commissioner of the Department of Public Service. Michelle Boomhauer, who I believe is here, uh, designee of the Secretary of the Agency of Transportation. Marie Audette, Audette's Blue Spruce Farm, representing the agricultural uh, uh, sector. Linda McGinnis, who is here from the Energy Action Network, representing the clean energy sector. Joe Fusco of Casella, representing the commercial hauling uh, or trucking sectors. Bob Stevens of Stevens and Associates, representing the construction or development sectors. Kristen Carlson, who is here, Green Mountain Power, representing energy utilities. Mary Sprayragan, Vermont Energy Investment Corporation, who is here, representing the energy efficiency sector. Johanna Miller, Vermont Natural Resources Council, representing a statewide environmental organization, and she is here as well. Peter Bourne of Bourne's Energy, representing the fuel sector. Liz Gamash, Mayor of St. Albans, representing local communities and local government. Adam Nudson of Dynapower, representing the manufacturing sector. Bill LaBerge, Grassroots Solar, representing small businesses. Bethany Fleischman, Vital Communities Upper Valley Transportation Management Association, representing the transportation demand management sector. And Tom Donahue is here, Bennington Rutland Opportunity Council, representing the Vermont Community Action Partnership. Not yet designated, but will be soon, is a representative from the forestry or forest products sectors as well, a representative from the research and development sector. Uh, and uh, as uh, we are currently uh, also looking for 
a uh, Vermont student who is uh, currently enrolled at a Vermont academic institution. If there's anyone who knows of someone who is currently enrolled at one of these institutions uh, and they would like to serve, please contact Peter Walk at the Agency of Natural Resources. The commission will be 21 members total, reflecting the, the best and brightest from a wide range of perspectives. This group brings a depth of knowledge as to what works, what doesn't, what opportunities we have for economic development, and ideas for spurring action in a meaningful way. In this, uh, in this executive order uh, that I have directed the Commission to develop uh, by, uh, by next July is an action plan. But I'd like to challenge them uh, to bring me at least three tangible, targeted recommendations by January 1 so the legislature and I can get to work on them as soon as possible. The decision to form this commission did not come lightly. I say that because I have a tendency to be wary of commissions. I think many of us share the same concerns. We've seen far too many of them form and then result in outcomes that are not realistic. To be honest, I was not immediately convinced that this was the best path forward, but I've thought about it deeply and I keep coming back to this point. If we all agreed on the appropriate actions to take, we would have taken them already. So by bringing this particular group of stakeholders uh, to the table, I hope we can overcome this bottleneck and find meaningful ways forward. So I'd like to conclude by saying, goals are important drivers of public policy, but we need a plan that propels us toward accomplishing these goals. And this is a serious challenge. I, it's a serious challenge that I lay on these 21 people as it is critical we achieve these goals in a way that makes Vermont stronger in the future. So I thank you again for the Commission members who are here today and for those who are not for your willingness to serve on this important endeavor. And at this point, we'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, when President Trump pulled out of the Paris Accord, one of the reasons he did so, he said, was because it was too stifling to job growth. Based on Vermont's success in the green job sector, do you think that the President's view on that was a miscalculation? Well, I, I do. I think it was a misstep uh, from my perspective. Uh, when you're one of only three countries in the world that are part of the solution, uh, I think you're, looking, you're, you're just on the outside looking in. And I think that we need to add our voice. We need to add our expertise. Uh, we all need to be in this together if we want to change uh, the climate uh, of, of the world. We all have to be there uh, at the table. So I think, uh, I think it was a misstep on his part. What happens if the commission decides that wind is a great way to go for Vermont? Uh, and it doesn't square with your own personal philosophies? Well, again, you know my feelings on uh, wind development on ridge lines. You know, uh, I'm not necessarily opposed to, to wind in some, uh, some spaces. Uh, I, uh, I just don't feel that we should be uh, destroying our ridge lines. And uh, there have been uh, many other successful uh, wind development projects uh, in, let's say, New York and fields and, and other areas. Uh, but, but again, I, I believe uh, that we have an opportunity uh, in, the, in the north, uh, particularly in, in the Canadian, uh, in Canada and the Quebec province for, uh, for energy and renewable energy in particular uh, to be be brought and transmitted to Vermont and through Vermont uh, to other sectors, and that includes wind as well. But they've made choices that uh, I don't think are ex acceptable for Vermont. You, you talk about wanting to meet the, the 2050 goal of 9010, uh, and I don't remember the exact details, but it seems like you inherited from the Shumland administration a bunch of intermediate goals, and I don't remember the details of those intermediate goals, but uh, there were much closer, like by 25, 2025 or 2030, uh, and I'm sorry, I wish I remembered the details, but do you look back those goals um, as well? Maybe I could ask Peter. He may have that information. I have seen uh, some of those uh, goals and the steps along the way as well, or maybe maybe it's June. Oh, happy to do that too. Um, <laughs> they are her plan. <laughs> there are interim goals or um, more near-term goals indeed. Like you, I don't have them precisely in mind at the moment but uh, they did pre-exist the governor's tenure and uh, public policy is geared toward um, being uh, consistent with them to the extent that that's possible. So, so you still, I mean, I'll go look them up once we get out of here. Yes, and you so, and I both. Okay. <laughs> but you still want to meet those goals as well? 
In fact, I think that that is consistent with the path the governor's laying out today. Um, there was a, there was a presentation by an official of the uh, Public Service Department last fall, not under your watch, uh, that showed that at at our current pace we would fall about fifty percent short of meeting that twenty fifty goal, and that seems to call for some fairly immediate urgent action and. Uh, even if we wait another year, that's another year where we're not, where we're behind that curve and we're falling behind more and more. Uh, you know, do you think, is this a step in the right direction? Well, I, I do think it's a step in the right direction. And again, I, I think that it's important for all of us uh, to be at the table uh, to consider different options. But I, but I will say, uh, over the weekend, I was at the uh, National Governors Association and a guy you may have heard of, uh, a guy named Elon Musk was there and they did an interview with him, and it was fascinating. Uh, frightening, but fascinating uh, at the same time. Um, the frightening part was uh, when he talked about artificial intelligence and, uh, and some of the uh, possibilities there and some of the regulatory responsibilities of government, uh, he believes. And he's not a particularly a regulation type of person, but he thinks there should be more regulation uh, for something we don't even know what it is yet. Um, but, uh, but on the other side, on the positive side, uh, he feels that uh, in, uh, in 10 years, uh, and, and that's part of his vision, and, uh, and I know he owns Tesla, uh, but uh, he feels in 10 years uh, half, the, half the vehicles will probably be, uh, be manufactured as, uh, as electric vehicles. He feels in 20 years um, there will be almost 100% uh, be electric in that period of time. Um, so te my point is, uh, technology is going to be part of the solution, and we've come inc incredibly far in the last uh, 10 to 20 years when you think about uh, things we're doing today versus what we were doing then and how efficient even uh, solar panels and so forth have, have become. And, uh, and I believe that uh, to drive technology uh, means that we all have to be there uh, asking uh, for this new technology and being part of that. Uh, could be an economic uh, benefit for Vermont. 2005, Governor Douglas created a Climate Change Commission. 2011, Governor Shumlin created a Climate Cabinet. Here we are in 2017 with a Climate Change Commission. Uh, I want to carry on the tradition. <laughs> uh, I'm wondering if we can expect another one in 2023, and why is this one different? And uh, did you maybe look at the other commissions yeah. and boards? Yeah, uh, obviously we looked at uh, other commissions and boards. Uh, I think it's important uh, to to reestablish uh, those commissions and and look at uh, what what the objectives were of the commissions. I think the uh, uh, the commissions that put forth by uh, um, Governor Shumlin, uh, there's like I think there's two or three to be honest with you, um, but but I think that uh, what we're looking for is they they went a long ways and we're looking to to move from there uh, forward and uh, and trying to. Uh, again, with uh, my vision of making, uh, growing the economy, making Vermont more affordable and take care of the most vulnerable, trying to inject and, and, uh, and utilize th that, uh, that vision, those guidelines, and those principles uh, to develop policy for the future. Um, I've spoken with an electric utility manager here in Vermont about the cost per kilowatt hour of wind and solar power. You had mentioned the technologies are advancing, but he explained to me as of at least the past few years, the cost is substantially higher for these energies. Um, is it, can you meet both, go both goals economically to strengthen Vermont and to move in this direction for the environment, or are they pulling in two different directions? Well, again, that's exactly why we're bringing these 21 people together uh, to consider that, because they come from different perspectives. And I think it's, they're important questions to ask ourselves. And, uh, I would add uh, that, that because it may be expensive here in Vermont uh, for, to produce renewable energy, we've, we've proven, we've seen that uh, in, in Canada uh, in particular, uh, they have an overabundance of uh, renewable energy that they're willing uh, to part with. And uh, they're looking for help, uh, in fact, in different markets uh, throughout the United States and Massachusetts in particular. And, and we'd like to be part of the solution there as well with uh, with the uh, with the new uh, conduit uh, that is all permitted, ready to go through Lake Champlain and through Ludlow and uh, into the Boston market. So we're hopeful uh, and we're working very hard 
uh, to, to be part of that solution to, to transfer power from uh, Canada to, uh, to the Boston region. You mentioned getting 80 to 95 percent of our energy from renewable sources by 2050. Um, is that a, are you walking back from the earlier goal of 90 percent of energy from? I, th I think it, emission yeah, the emission 80 to 95 were emission reductions, and the the 90 percent renewable is still there. And I, I I think I mentioned that in the remarks as well. We're still the goal is 90 percent renewable by 2050. I see a lot of government officials and a lot of business representatives, and I see one environmentalist. Is that enough? And I'll ask uh, Johanna Miller if she feels lonely at all. <laughs> Johanna, Not do you yet. feel lonely? <laughs> <laughs> Um, would anybody like to? I, 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 I would just answer. point out, Mr. Walters, that there are many government officials here who are also environmentalists. We're Vermonters, we're all, from, we're all environmentalists, but we, we've got to hammer out details in line with the governor's vision for ways to move this forward that are economical for Vermonters and support the future of our communities. At the same time, there's an enormous economic opportunity to do this right, to be ahead of the curve. There's an international, global competition for places that advance clean energy effectively and attract the innovators and the youth that will lead the economy forward. Why not Vermont? And, and as we know, a lot of the uh, the emissions uh, lie in the transportation sector, and that's why we've we've asked certain members of the transportation sector to, to come on board. Yes, absolutely. I, and when I met with uh, the um, Premier Couillard in uh, Quebec, uh, he uh, he had mentioned that they were going to have uh, uh, their their goal is 100,000 new electric vehicles in uh, their uh, province in the next few years and uh, and they're going to double down on that so to speak and so that's why we're looking at uh, trying to provide corridors for recharging and and uh, different uh, opportunities for us uh, from a couple of standpoints one is uh, is to make sure that we're ready for the future uh, but as well when we're asking uh, the tourists from Canada to come visit our state that they have a place uh, that they can recharge so it, and that, and again that's part of why I believe this uh, this particular commission, uh, from all different perspectives, is important to consider. Uh, where you can, you, there's a win-win situation, uh, win-win-win at times as well. So, I think it's important uh, that we have all voices at the table, much like the the legislature, where you have uh, you have uh, I, the citizens' legislature, where you have people from all walks of life uh, to add their voice. It's a very we've been talking about it is kind of. Neil's question. You, you know that this is such a can be such an emotional issue on how to do this. Um, you know, well, why not have one of the opponents, like Annette Smith, on the commission? Or did you ask her? I mean, she's pretty thoughtful. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that she's an opponent. Uh, she might be an opponent of wind, uh, but I'm not sure she, that she's an opponent of uh, renewable energy. I think that's the point uh, for a lot of Vermonters is that. Uh, if you can make the case uh, that that this is something that we will bring to Vermont uh, to become more energy uh, independent, uh, self-sufficient, I think that that tugs at the, the heart of many Vermonters. We all want to be independent, and I believe that we can be if we if we and especially if we play our cards right, uh, we can do so in a way that uh, that doesn't cost us any more money, and actually we could profit from it. So. If you if you bring in uh, that dynamic, I, I believe that uh, that we can all uh, have something we can be proud of in the end. I mean, which, which dynamic? Uh, just having uh, understanding that uh, bringing in the fact that uh, we can take care of ourselves, uh, be uh, energy independent, uh, self sufficient. I think that that's the uh, that's the part that sometimes we're missing, and and I think that more people would would join in uh, if they thought about it in a different way. Does energy independence and self-sufficiency include all that wonderful renewable energy from Canada? Yeah, they're just like our, you know, next door neighbors. They're not really, you know. But but it's but but they offer renewable energy. Uh, why wouldn't why do we have to produce everything ourselves and when we have such a good rapport with them? It's something that we've been been working on. Again, we have a great relationship with Quebec and and I believe uh, that with with all our efforts, uh, we're going to have an even better relationship. So, 
uh, I think it's just a, a, a largest trading partner, uh, something that we can both benefit from. Might you investigate asking the state police if they would drive you around in an electric or hybrid vehicle? Is that what I guess you mean? You know, it it will come to that at some point. Uh, it's, it's, you know, we we know with the VW settlement. In fact, I was talking about it this morning. Uh, that we're what are we going to do? And, uh, and I've asked uh, our team to take a look, and and we need to make investments, and and you, you know. Um, Walk the talk. So we'll see. We'll see what happens in the future. But it's not lost upon me uh, that we need to do better in that regard. Paul mentioned the the opportunity for for Vermont or other places to be to be the the place that starts generating new renewable sources of energy. And your focus seems to be on purchasing it from elsewhere. Um, so it already seems like there's widely disparate views from you know the co-chair and you on uh, how best to move forward? Well, I, I'm not sure uh, that, that we, we have, uh, um, that we necessarily disagree uh, entirely. I, I think we have to have a mix and, and understand that we're a very small state and that maybe we can't produce everything that we, uh, that we need. Um, but, but I think that, again, technology is going to come into play. And uh, if there's a way for us to do it uh, with new technology that doesn't, uh, that doesn't uh, have an effect on uh, on uh, the vulnerable or different areas that uh, that don't want uh, that type of power or whatever it is, uh, that we should take advantage of it. So we'll we'll be contemplating so, all but that. So is your preference to be a buyer rather than a producer? Well, again, when you look at uh, what what emits the most carbon in society now, a lot of it is transportation. So I think we have to look in that sector. If if there is a choice to be made between economic impact and environmental progress you know in some senses you know things will get cheaper technology will improve but if if it's a choice between costing more and you know uh, holding off uh, is your default in favor of keeping costs down my first day in office I keep I keep saying this but it's worth repeating Growing Vermont's economy, making Vermont more affordable, taking care of the most vulnerable, and uh, that's those are my objectives. And I think we can have both. Uh, we can s satisfy both of uh, the concerns you laid out. Uh, can Vermont make a difference in the global perspective? I mean, we're one small state and one nation, and there's China and all these other big industrial sure. powers around the world. If we were to be asked to sacrifice quality of life or any kind of economic setback for this, would it be worth it? Well, again, that's why I think there needs to be both, a uh, combination of both, uh, making sure that we're uh, economically viable, uh, that we have our eye on, on that, and we can possibly uh, could uh, be able to take advantage of that, profit from that, and be an example uh, for others. Uh, that's why I, I just think it's important for us uh, to be uh, with the rest of the world uh, as, a, as a country, but if we can't as a country, um, at least individually, uh, the state's getting together. Uh, to send that message that we want to be part of the solution. Governor, can I add that the, the reason why China is stepping up and continuing to lead as, we, as the U.S. steps away on, on Paris and other things related to climate change is because they see the economic opportunity. And we can lead both regionally, nationally, and globally as our state. We may be small, but we are mighty. <laughs> Do you have any favorites in the Formula E race uh, in Montreal? <laughs> you know, I don't know all the drivers, but I, uh, I, I've watched it on, uh, on TV a couple times. I think it's exciting. Uh, you don't hear the, the sound, which is a little bit of a problem. I think they'll, they'll probably have to come up with a solution for that, but it's incredibly fast. And the technology's there. And, uh, and, and again, I think the future of racing is still bright because it, uh, it uh, challenges technology. And, uh, and we're doing that. We're seeing that in Formula E. Have you noticed how bad the mosquitoes seem to be this year? <laughs> I have not. Um, I've I was spent told to ask you that, by the way, by Stuart Ledbetter. <laughs> <laughs> he's, um, he's, um, I, he's noticed. I spend, I spend a lot of time inside. Maybe when he's outside, you know, lounging around in the chair, in the chair out by out in the woods, uh, maybe maybe there are a lot of mosquitoes, but uh, I haven't, I haven't noticed that. It helps to be going fast when you're outside. Yeah, that's right. Uh, are you racing tonight? I am not. I am not. Unfortunately. Uh, 
since your brand new finance commissioner is here, <laughs> and it looks like he's got some trusty paperwork with him. Um, can you address uh, where you'll look first with the revenue downgrade expected tomorrow? <laughs> that was that was a loaded kind of a thing. <laughs> I don't remember saying there was going to be a, a downgrade. And your, your finance commissioner said so yesterday. Well, I think we're going to end up the year in pretty good shape, uh, and then we're going to to come through with a, uh, a little bit of extra revenue, uh, but uh, acknowledging that we have our challenges in the future in terms of revenue. So we're going to uh, we're going to meet with the board tomorrow and uh, work out a solution for the for the small amount that I believe uh, that we need to to uh, react to in the future with a, a bit of a re revenue downgrade. So the budget lays out how to deal with the corporate income tax refunds that everyone expects to uh, come through. Do you have a plan ready to go for whatever the, the economists say tomorrow in terms of what that number is? We're, we're working on something, and, and I think that uh, that we'll be able to make the case, and I think everyone will come away um, agreeing with that. But we'll uh, we'll see tomorrow. Well, thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it, and thank you all for serving. Thanks. I have copies of the executive order. Thank you. Can we have to talk about answer, though? Yeah. <laughs>